Okay, let's get started. Um, so my name is Vanessa. I am Community Outreach Manager at Crossref and myself and my colleague Susan will be talking to you today about Crossref Similarity Check Service. We also have our colleagues Kathleen and Rachel who will be in the chat and helping to answer questions in the Q&A. Um, to make things a bit easier, you're all muted during this webinar, but if you have any questions, do feel free to put them into the Q&A box or write them into the chat and we'll get around to answering them. There'll also be time at the end and we'll stay around to answer a few questions then. So to kick off, I'd like to do a short poll um, to find out who of you is already participating in Similarity Check. So this will appear on your screen shortly. Bear me one moment. So you should be able to see the poll now. I'll just give you a few more seconds for people to put their answers. Okay, great. I'm going to share the results. So hopefully you should be able to see the results on your screen. Um, so we've got about 20% of the people have said yes, they're already participating in the marriage check. Um, over 60% not yet. And interestingly, about 20% of you are not, not quite sure, which is normal if you work in quite, particularly if you work in quite a big organisation. Um, it's not always clear who's participating in what service. But it's quite useful for us to know while we're doing this. Okay, so to tell you a bit of an introduction about Similarity Check. So it is a service that helps editors to prevent plagiarism. To do this, Crossref members are given access to Turnitin's powerful text comparison tool called Authenticate. Um, and this is so that they can compare their own manuscripts against the largest comparison database of full text academic content in the world. And while there are several different plagiarism screening tools available, using Authenticate as a Similarity Check member is unique because it creates a relationship between the content owners and Turnitin. So Similarity Check members have a reduced fee uh, for use of Authenticate because they contribute their own published content into Turnitin's database of full text literature. So this means as the number of Similarity Check members grow, so too does the size of the Authenticate uh, content database. And more content in the database means greater peace of mind for editors who are looking to determine a manuscript's originality. And what is Authenticate? So this is a piece of software owned by the company Turnitin. It's for text-based screening um, of, of manuscripts and they are compared against a very vast database of content which contains um, content from over 1 billion web pages, over 57 million content items from Crossref and over 100 million items from other content providers. And you can use this in a browser or via the API. And this is how the Similarity Check service works. So if you are a Similarity Check member, you would upload a document to Authenticate and manuscripts can be submitted in a number of different formats, including Word, um, plain text, PDF and HTML. And then a similarity report would be produced. And this shows the percentage of similarity between a submitted manuscript and the content existing in the database. Users can then compare the original and the database documents side by side. And the editor can then make a decision about whether the similarity that's detected is legitimate or if further investigation is required. And when Crossref members register new content, they provide link in their, uh, a full text link 
which Turnitin then uses to index the item and add it to their database. So, as I've said, the database is constantly expanding and kept up to date. And you can see on the slide there that's an example of what the report would look like. So it will flag up and highlight all of the matches and on the side you can see all of the different matches and sources that is found. And you can click into each of those for more information. And here we go, you can see that a little bit closer up. So it does show the percentage of the text that's similar. Um, editors can review those matches. However, the similarity percentage, it can be misleading if you don't interpret that properly. So some of the text might be similar such as properly cited references or standard scientific descriptions. Um, for example, the material and methods used in an experiment can be very similar to other experiments. Um, it also can flag up um, preprints, for example, which would match very closely to the published article. So you can um, exclude certain sections of text or sources, or you can also set a percentage threshold so that you just evaluate things that flagged above that. And who is using similarity check? So at the moment we have over 1,700 participating Crossref members and an average of nearly 300,000 manuscripts are screened, have been screened every month this year so far. We're seeing quite a usage, um, increase in usage from publishers in Japan, Brazil, South Korea, Turkey and other countries. Um, and this is because publishers are investing more into their plagiarism policies. Um, and editors may use similarity check at different stages in the submission process. Um, the most common of these is on submission. Um, they can also do this at a defined point in the review and editorial process, which varies widely from publisher to publisher, or just prior to acceptance. Okay, um, another feature is the document to document comparison. And this means that users are um, allowed to compare one primary document against up to five other documents. This is particularly useful if you're comparing pieces of work that have not yet been published or content that's been published outside of the Authenticate database. So when the upload is complete, a similarity score is generated for the primary document based on the amount of similar content found in the comparison documents. You can also view a full comparison report as well if you wish, um, compared to the, all of the content in the Authenticate database. So the comparison report will open in the document viewer and it will display the primary document along with a list of comparison documents and the similarity percentage. If one of the comparison documents doesn't include text that matches the primary document, Authenticate will display this with a 0% score, allowing users to rule this out of their inspection. The similarity report will be stored securely in the users folder until they delete it. As these documents will not be stored in a shared database, they won't affect the similarity score of any future submissions. Primary and comparison documents remain completely private and will not be indexed into the shared Authenticate content database. So what type of issues are publishers looking for when they use similarity check? Well, this might be poor, missing or incomplete references, which is something that can be quite easily fixed. Um, it might be self-plagiarism, also known as text recycling. And so this is a use of one's own previous work in another context without citing that it was used previously. Or it might be some other slightly more serious issues, such as unattributed use of parts of another person's work or submitting another person's work as your own, or attempts by the author to deliberately mislead or misrepresent their findings. And my colleague Susan now is going to take over and tell you about how to join Similarity Check. Hey, thanks, Vanessa. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Susan Collins. Um, I'm going to start talking a bit about what are the obligations and the process for adding Similarity Check to your account. So there are a couple of requirements that members must meet in order to get started. Um, the first is that members must be registering content and assigning DOIs in order to start. So if you're a new member and you haven't registered any content yet, you do have to start doing that in order to use Similarity Check. The second obligation is enabling your content, content to be indexed so it can be included in the Turnitin database. 
And indexing is done by adding as crawled URLs to the metadata of each content item that is registered with Crossref. And full text URLs must be included in at least 90% of your metadata deposits in order to apply for the service. So full text URL is a specific crawler friendly link um, that are used, that's used by Turnitin's crawler services to index your content. And it points to the location of the full text content, either the PDF, the HTML, or the plain text version that's associated with each DOI. And this allows the Turnitin service to scan the text against any submitted manuscripts. However, it does not provide outside reader access to the content. So even if your as crawled URLs are the same as your DOI resource URLs, you'll still need to enter them separately as specific as crawled URLs. For new content, um, the URL can be included as part of the initial um, de metadata deposit. Um, existing DOIs can be updated to include the full text URL if it wasn't done so initially. You can check the percentage of your deposits that contain the full text URLs on our similarity check services page. And to do this, you simply type, um, type in and select your account name in the member name box, which is um, what you see displayed on the slide here. The percentage of DOIs that contain the full text URL will then be displayed. If the percentage is 90% or higher, a link to the application form will then be displayed on the page. So then um, your organization can, re can review and agree to the terms that are part of the application process. And then once your application is submitted, we'll work with Turnitin to get the account set up, assuming that all the criteria has been met and that Turnitin is able to access um, your full text. Um, Turnitin will then send out the account details once this has been completed. More information on how to include full text URLs in your DOI metadata or update your existing DOIs can be found um, in the Similarity Check Services page. You can see the link there again at the bottom the bottom of this slide. Um, next up, a little bit more about what, um, what exactly is a full text URL and what it points to. So um, providing a link that just shows the abstract of the article um, isn't going to work for indexing. A link to the download or the HTML of the full text is required. Um, a URL can't point to the article landing page, even if the content is available via a link on that page. Again, it must point directly to the location of the full text content. Um, and third, providing a link that shows the article in the PDF viewer um, also won't work for indexing. Turnitin isn't able to index the content with that format. Again, you'll need to provide a link to either the download or the HTML of the full text. So um, next up, once you've added your similarity check URLs to your metadata, the Turnitin crawler will look to index your content. If your content is protected by any sort of authentication, you may need to whitelist um, their IP address so that they can access your content. If your content is openly available, you won't need to do this. Um, again, reminder, only Turnitin will have access to the full text content for the purposes of checking against submitted manuscripts. And more information on how to whitelist their IP address for indexing is in the link that's available at the bottom of the slide. Okay, so how much does the similarity check service cost? There are two fees to use the service. Um, the first, Crossref charges an annual administrative fee, which is equal to 20% of your Crossref membership fee. So for example, if you pay $275 a year as a member, the administrative fee for similarity check would be an additional $55. And this would be index, uh, invoiced with your annual fee each January. There's also a fee for each manuscript that's checked uh, using the Authenticate tool. The first 100 documents are free of charge. And then after this, the fee starts at 75 cents for each of the first 5,000 documents that are checked. Um, and again, Crossref will invoice the document checking fees annually. Um, I believe in January, um, along with your annual member fee. A couple of other frequently asked questions that we get about Similarity Check. If you are um, one of our members who works with a sponsor and you are using the Similarity Check service, but you're interested in changing to a different sponsor, 
you need to make sure that the new sponsor offers the service for the members with which they work. Not every sponsoring organization um, offers it to their members. So you check with them, or if you are unsure, you can also check with us and we can let you know if that sponsor offers the service. Um, similarly, if you are a member in considering starting working with a sponsoring organization and you either have similarity check or are interested in using it, again, check with the new sponsor to ensure that it is something that they're offering um, to their members. The second point is that the, um, there are authenticate checks integrated into a number of the main manuscript submission systems. Um, however, members who wanted to use these still need to meet the obligations of the service and go through the application process. The credentials that Turnitin will send you can then be entered into the manuscript submission system and you'd be able to use um, the authenticate service through that submission system once you have the credentials set up. Okay, so we've presented a bit of information for you here today, but if you are looking for more information, there are a number of ways to get answers to your questions. First up is our community forum, which is an opportunity to post a question for Crossref staff, um, our ambassadors, and other members of the Crossref community. The forum has a wide range of topics for members, including technical help, upcoming events and webinars, and then information on each of our services, including similarity check. Um, it's, if you are, have any questions about maybe using the service or looking for feedback from other members, how they use this, the service in their submission process, um, posting that question to the community forum might be, might be helpful for that information. Our technical staff can also help you um, with questions like adding the ASCRAL URLs to, to your metadata deposits. Um, Additional sources of information, the links here, again, for the community forum that I just mentioned. We have newly updated um, education documentation that's available, not just for similarity check, but for all of our services. Um, if you have technical questions, you can email our staff at support at crossref.org or interested in finding out more about similarity check in general, you could email our membership team at member at crossref.org. Um, okay, well that ends the presentation part of the webinar and um, we are now um, opening up the question and answer time on the Q&A box. Um, if there are any questions that you have, feel free to type them in there or in the chat window and we, um, we can answer them for you there. Um, okay, we've had a question in the chat from Megan. He said, we've mentioned full text URLs and also something that sounds like as crawled. Um, yes, that's as crawled, which is um, it's a machine learning term. And um, it just means that I, the authenticate system can find the access to the full text and then crawl this text for the content. Um, so that's what we, it's the same thing. It's what we mean by a full text URL. We need a, a URL that points to the full text content, not just a landing page, so that the Authenticate system can use that content um, for comparisons. Um, another question in the chat um, is, is Authenticate and Turnitin the same or different? Um, so Turnitin is the parent company of Authenticate. Authenticate is a service that Turnitin offer. Um, Turnitin also have other services. I'm sure you might have heard of them um, for university submissions, for example. Um, so this is slightly different because this is published pieces of work. Um, and a follow-up question to that was how many similarity percentages 
do journal, journals accept? This is completely up to um, you as an editor and also the, the journals themselves. Um, we don't have a guidelines for what is considered plagiarism and what is not. Um, that's why we always say to investigate anything that looks slightly suspicious. If you see a high percentage of similar text, you might want to investigate that a bit more, look into the sources, find out if it is plagiarism. There's no hard and fast rule when it comes to that. I think my colleagues are still answering a few questions in the Q&A. We'll still be around for a bit. So if you have any more questions, do feel free to write them in there and we'll get back to you. Um, otherwise, uh, thank you very much for joining today. And we hope that you found this useful. We will share the slides afterwards so that you can have a copy of these and they will also go on our website as well.